just today's not been a good mental health day. <sighs> Before the video starts, I just want to let y'all know I will be addressing some um, triggering topics maybe for some people. Um, I talk about anxiety and um, depression in this video, so if that triggers you, um, I will leave a timestamp down below for certain portions of the video that you should skip if that does trigger you. So if you're triggered by me talking about anxiety and depression, be sure to check out those timestamps down below so you can avoid those. But anyways, please enjoy the video. Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and welcome to the start of my Buzz Wordathon reading vlog. So this is my first time participating in the Buzz Wordathon. Um, if you didn't know what the Buzz Wordathon is, it's basically a readathon where our host picks out a word that you can find in a bunch of titles and then you read books that have that word in it. Like for example, this one is you so you read books that have you in the title i haven't participated in any of the other rounds because i didn't own any books with any of those even the who what when where why how one zero books with any of those and i have over 50 on my tbr shelf i guess i just don't buy books with who what when where why or how <laughs> this round is you it is from june 12th to june 18th today is june 11th so here is my tbr for the week the first book that i'm going to talk about is all your perfects by colleen hoover this is probably one that I'm definitely going to read. I actually have this one signed and personalized by Colleen Hoover herself. I'm super excited to read this because I love Colleen Hoover and I just want to read all of her books because she is one of my favorite authors. So I cannot wait to get into this one. I don't know all that much about it except that it deals with a uh, married couple and they're going through some marriage struggles. Next is Always Never Yours by Emily Riverly and Austin Siegeman Broca. Um, this sounds like a really cute contemporary. This is a young adult contemporary romance. Basically our main character girl I know she is known for like always being the girl that a guy is with before they find their true love. Like they're with her and then they break up and then they end up finding the person that they're supposed to be with apparently. Like it's happened many times to her. She is like I think a stagehand or a really big person backstage for like the theater department. I think she has to be like in a role or be in one play or musical at some point to be able to like do something or like get into the college she wants maybe I don't remember and so she like auditions to like get a small role and she ends up getting the role of Juliet in Romeo and Juliet and I think she develops this crush on like um, one of the stagehands and she asks one of her cast members to like help her get him or something um and I think she ends up actually falling for it the guy she's in the show with I don't know if that's right at all. Do not hold me for that whatsoever. If I read this book later in the week, I'll tell you if my synopsis was right or not, I guess. Um, and the last physical book that I have is Because You Love to Hate Me by an anthology of authors and booktubers. Basically, this is a short story collection where booktubers have collaborated with authors and I think there are stories about villains and like reimagining of villains. So that sounds really cool and I think I might just read a story or two stories a day throughout the week. So We'll see what I think about this one. I do have some books that I do not have physically that I want to read. So I of course have to pick an audiobook because I'm a big audiobook buff. For this one I have Royally Yours by Emma Chase and this is the one book in the Royally series I haven't read yet. So I'm excited to get it off of Audible because you can only get it off of Audible. I'm excited for this one. I believe this is about the queen of the land like it goes back in time to tell you how her love story went so i'm excited for that the sun is so bright in my eyes hello everybody it is officially the start of the buzz board of thon it is the first day it is later on in the day though it is around seven o'clock at night and i'm just now getting around to filming because i worked from a nine to five today and then i immediately after that went to go get my nails done and I need like acrylics or powder nails because I like to pick my face sorry if I'm if sorry if that's gross without these nails I make my face bleed which is disgusting I pick at my skin like I just need to have fake nails so I don't rip apart my body <laughs> it's like a nervous tick it comes with the anxiety so this helps me with that <laughs> so today I woke up just like really tired which is my fault because I probably should have gone to bed earlier. Throughout the whole day, I had a 
severe splitting headache, like a horrible migraine, and I was dizzy and just like not feeling all that great. I'm um, very lethargic. I'm just having a bad day health-wise. And normally when I like feel dizzy or off, I sometimes pass out. So it triggers the, um, the passing out. Yeah, so I was really worried today. I read like a chapter of my physical read, All Your Perfects, while getting my nails done, while getting my pedicure done. And I got dizzy reading, which like sucks. Um... I'm just like so tired and I feel so drained today. I also found out that maybe the reason why I was dizzy is because I had my hair up in a ponytail, like a high ponytail. Is this happening to anyone else? They wear a top knot or a high ponytail or they wear headbands. Headbands now, I cannot do it. I can't, my head just like hurts so much and I feel so dizzy that I will faint. I don't understand. I'm really frustrated. Like. This low ponytail isn't cute. I normally just do it to get the hair off my neck and not feel hot. And like, I put it like that when I eat so my hair doesn't get in my face while I eat. But like, I didn't wanna like, not be able to wear like a ponytail anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like going to the gym with your hair in like a low ponytail is gross. Cause then your hair gets all in your neck and it's all sweaty and like, that's gonna suck if I can't come to the gym and wear like a, a ponytail. Like, I'm just so upset that I'm getting these migraines and these dizzy spells. <sighs> Anyways, I forgot to tell you, I also made progress in Royally Yours by Emma Chase. I think I'm on chapter four or five. It's going great so far. I love this narrator and um, I'm loving Queen Lenora's perspective. This takes place like 50 years or 60 years in the past. So you have like the 1950s culture, which is really interesting to read about. So I'm hoping to try and read a little bit more tonight. We'll see if reading physically makes me dizzy again. Hey y'all, it is day two of the Buzzwordathon. I'm house sitting right now, but then I'm also having to go um, take care of other animals for people who are out of town. So I'm gonna go do that. And then I have to go get my blood taken again to figure out what's going on with me. <laughs> and then I have some books I have to pick up from the library. So I'm going to go do that as well. I only have around two hours left of Royally Yours and I love this book. Ugh. I love these books, like this series so much. Like it's so good, it's so good. Like the second book in the series is like amazing. Like, and this book I think is like my second favorite so far. Hey y'all, it is later. I just came out of my library and I got my blood taken. I also figured out why I'm feeling so bad for the past couple days. My period started. <laughs> my anemia and my lightheadedness and my migraines get way worse when it's upcoming to my period. Literally almost fainted yesterday because of it. Great. The ironic thing is though, it started while I was getting my blood taken. Isn't that just so ironic? <laughs> okay, so first I'm gonna talk about the books that I got in the free section. In my library, there's like a little free section that you can just take books and go home with and keep them. I found Barbie, Princess and the Pauper. Y'all, this is one of my favorite Barbie movies growing up. And I had it for free. So excited, so excited. I love this one so much. I even had like my own robotic, like Serafina, who would like meow when you like pet her. <laughs> like I loved this movie so much. I also found The Royal We by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan in the free section. I don't know anything about this except it's about like a, it's a royalty romance book. I love royalty romance books, so I cannot wait for this, but I know nothing about it. It kinda looks like William and Kate. And then I found this beautiful version of A Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Cause I just read Little Women and I needed this copy. Like look how pretty that is. It has all the girls on the front. Okay, now to the books I actually checked out. I again checked out Hate to Want You by Alicia Ray, a romance book that Amy from Book Girl Abroad always recommends to me and my time for it expired 
the last time I checked it out. You can only renew it two times and you have to put it back in and I rechecked it out. <laughs> then we have The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. Um, Julia Quinn is one of Ashley from Ash Heart Books, like favorite author. She talks about Julia Quinn like all the time. And I asked her what book I should start with and it's The Duke and I, the first book in the Bridgerton series, I believe. So I am super duper duper excited because she talks about the Bridgerton series all the time. So I need to know what's going on. And then we have The Wrong Highlander by Lindsay Sands. I have like a hate to love thing with Lindsay Sands. All of her books are maybe like a three star. 3.5 read for me and they are basically following the exact same plot throughout but number one this book cover it's gorgeous <laughs> I haven't read a Lindsay Sands in a while so I thought I would give it another go don't know anything about this one though and then I also got Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire I have heard nothing but good things about this book and it is fairly fairly short so I cannot wait to get into this one and lastly probably the most excited book in this whole stack. We have The English Roses Too Good To Be True by Madonna. If y'all don't know, the first English Roses book was my childhood as a kid. Like I had this English Roses shirt that I would wear all the time and I still have it to this day. I plan to like put it in a frame or something and hang it up somewhere because it is so flipping cute and I need to have it on a wall somewhere to display. I I've never heard of this one. So I can't wait to read it because I love the English Roses so much. And I think it's about like one of the girls getting like a boyfriend, <laughs> which is so cute. Okay, I'm gonna go home and read some more and put these books on my shelves because I cannot wait even though it's probably not a good time for me to get so many books from the library because I have so many books I need to read that are on my TBR shelf. But you know, we're not gonna think about that right now. I'm so, I'm so glad that I got this. I'm so glad. <laughs> but anyways, yes, I'm gonna go drive home, eat some lunch, and read. Hey y'all, it is the next day. I haven't been filming at all today. It's like 10.30 at night, but I wanted to let you know that I finished two books since I talked to y'all. I ended up finishing Royally Yours by Emma Chase yesterday, last night, or yesterday afternoon. I gave that five stars. It is the conclusion to the Royally series and I loved it. I thought it was a wonderful conclusion and I loved Queen Lenora's story so much. I totally recommend the Royally series by Emma Chase. If you're into royalty romance, this is the way to go for sure. I also picked up a book that's not on my TBR, but I checked out Hate to Want You by Alicia Ray, and I ended up also having the audiobook through the library too at the same time. So I ended up listening to Hate to Want You by Alicia Ray, which was a 10 hour audiobook, and I started it yesterday and finished it this afternoon. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> I think I'm giving that one five stars too. It was wonderful. The rest of the series would really fit for the Buzzboard Thong because the next two books in the series also have you in the title, but I have to wait for them through. The library they're like on a wait list maybe i'll see if they're in the romance package on audible i'll check to see that i finished that book today and i really enjoyed it really enjoyed it this book was recommended to me by amy from book girl abroad um she talks about this series all the time and how much she loves it so i had to check it out and it did not disappoint me at all <laughs> i really 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 loved it basically this is about a couple and they used to be a couple back in the day back when they were um, when she was like 19 and he was maybe like 22 and then this big accident or tragedy happens between their two families it affects each other and um, she ends up leaving town and doesn't come back till they're to their town for 10 years but every year on her birthday for the past 10 years they have had like a one night stand um, like he comes to meet her in whatever town that she's in and they have a one night stand like only for one night for the past 10 years on her birthday and this takes place after those 10 years and she actually moves back home and it's the repercussions of that and them maybe getting together maybe not getting together it's about their feuding families too I really really loved this but other than that I am first chapter in for All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover I really enjoyed the first chapter so I don't really have any other thoughts about it but I enjoyed the first chapter I plan to be reading for the next hour or two um so I'm gonna be reading the rest of this or as much as I can. I'm not gonna finish it today or anything. I'm really proud of myself because it's the third day of Buzzword and I've already finished two books. So pat on the back for that. <laughs> hey y'all, so I am around 70 pages 
75 pages through all your perfects but I'm gonna have to put it down for tonight at least I want to finish it and I'm going to finish it hopefully but right now it's just very triggering to my anxiety this book deals with infertility and that is one of the two of my greatest fears infertility and miscarriaging that's like my two greatest fears of all time. This book deals with that, and I've never experienced that before, but it is my two greatest fears, and it's just making my anxiety go through the roof. Like, I've already cried once. I cried mainly because I started thinking about me having to go through something like that, and it just, like, mm, it did not make me feel good. So I'm I'm loving it though. Like this book, I can already tell is going to be a favorite of mine. I think I'm going to really love it. I already do really love it. It's just I think for my own mental sake, I need to not read it in one go. I need to like chunk it up and split it up so I don't become too overwhelmed by triggering my anxiety. So I'm putting that aside for the night and I guess I'll just watch a movie or watch some YouTube videos. One of my things about anxiety is I catastrophize a lot and I feel like this book is making me catastrophize because this woman has endometriosis and I'm pretty sure I have endometriosis and it's just making me thinking about, well, what if I have it? 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 Like, it's not making me feel good right now. So I'm going to distract myself and I'll get to this book either tomorrow or another day right now it's not really healthy for me hey y'all happy saturday it is later in the day it's around five o'clock i have not read anything of all your perfects by colleen hoover i haven't really felt the urge to pick it up again yet because i'm not really there yet i don't think but i think i'm going to be in the next couple days but right now not so much um i have started another audiobook called suddenly you by lisa klepas this so far is really good i think i'm only listening to chapter one right now i didn't have this book on my tbr either but it was available to download on libby so basically i believe this is a historical romance book this girl is turning 30 and she's still a virgin so she decides to basically hire a male escort so you can like get it done and over with because she doesn't want to be known as the 30 year old spinster i'm at the very 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 beginning so i don't know anything else i haven't read the summary for it so that's all i know right now and i think like a guy comes to her door who she thinks is the person that she hired when it's actually not the person that she hired so i'm gonna see but i just got back from my house i just filmed a collaboration with my friend kate my friend Kate from a middle school and she has her own YouTube channel. She um, isn't a booktuber, but she's a YouTuber. She basically does anything that she wants to on her channel. So um, she has like comedy stuff. So be sure to check out her channel. I'll link it down below. And a video with her is going to be coming out in the future. So stay tuned for that for sure. Hey y'all, it is the next day. Um, I am just about to go head off to the gym. But I thought I would give you a little update while I try and do my hair to go to the gym so I cannot put it up in a high ponytail anymore apparently so uh, I am listening to suddenly you still and I am really enjoying it it's actually probably one of the funniest historical fiction romance books that I've read I'm really enjoying myself that's the only book I've made progress on I haven't continued with all your perfects yet um, but right now I'm really in like the audiobook mood I don't know I guess this whole readathon might be just audiobooks. Yeah, I'm gonna go head off to the gym and I'm gonna watch some booktube while I walk on the treadmill because I like to walk on the treadmill for like an hour and I like to watch and comment on booktube videos while doing so. So I'm gonna go do that right now. Hey y'all, it is later in the day. It is around 10 o'clock at night. I'm about to head off to bed. I'm trying to go to sleep early because I have to wake up really early tomorrow for my new student orientation. Well, my transfer student orientation. I decided to transfer schools and tomorrow is my orientation and I think my anxiety is like through the roof. <laughs> it doesn't help. I'm like, I'm like on an emotional roller coaster today. I've, uh, I haven't had that good of a week. Let's just say that. I'm catastrophizing this experience already with um orientation like a coping mechanism my therapist taught me is you got to visualize 
before you go so you don't catastrophize. You gotta visualize yourself going there. But I find it very hard, very hard to visualize something or visualize going somewhere, doing something that I've never done before. That's what I think makes me super stressed is that I'm going to a place I've never been to before and I'm meeting people I've never met before. And like, how are you supposed to visualize something or like prepare for something that you've never done or experienced or people you've never met before. The last college I went to sent me into my depression. Like, that school was not healthy for me. I was very depressed, like the year and a half that I was there. It was not healthy, that's why I had to move back home. I didn't feel good about myself. My anxiety just got worse and worse and worse and worse. I think the main reason was because I was really lonely. I didn't make any friends while I was at college. This whole experience is like making me really nervous because I don't want to go back to that part of me, you know? Like, I don't want to experience all of that again. And yeah, I'm just really praying that this school or this new environment is going to be different and better. So yeah, I guess I'm just going to go sit down and try to fall asleep and relax. <laughs> hey y'all, it's the next day. Today has not been a good day for me. Um, I went to orientation today, and I've decided not to go to the school that, um, I went to orientation for. I'd only been there for a day, and I already felt that depression coming back, so I decided not to go there. I didn't sign up for classes, so that's not anything like I'm not wasting my money or anything. I just I've had a really rough time with school. College is not the environment for me. Um, most kids in college like to party and all that kind of stuff, and I don't like to do that. And um, I think people like me who don't like to do that are like me and stay in their rooms all the time. And I can't find people like me, so. Like, my just, my social anxiety was not great today. I even, like, talked to somebody and, like, tried to make a friend and. I felt like I had, like, one conversation with one person and then they just didn't want to talk to anybody. And maybe that's just them and they didn't want to talk to anybody, but I don't know, it kind of like punched me in the gut. Because like, I tried so hard. I made a goal for myself to start a conversation with one person today. And hopefully it would turn into something like a friend maybe, or exchanging numbers, or doing something. And um, that did not happen. Which... Maybe it's my fault. I don't know. But at the time, it felt like my fault. Because they didn't want to talk to me. But, um. I've just felt really. Lonely. Fuck. Everyone my age and all my friends are in school. I've been. Uh, I've been. Taking. I took this spring semester off. And it looks like I'm going to take another semester off. Because I'd have to wait a whole another semester to apply or get into the other school that I think might be a good fit for me. I don't know. So. Oh, today's just not been good. I didn't have lunch today either while I was there because I didn't have anything gluten free for me to eat. 
so I've been starving and because I didn't eat anything I couldn't take my medication and so I wasn't feeling good and just like <sighs> that just isn't a good school for me I can already tell I wasn't excited at all I wasn't happy at all like some of my friends I see my friends at college for my I see my high school friends that go to college and they talk about all the time how much they love their school and uh my sister my younger sister even came back from orientation her school's orientation like a couple weeks ago and just like could not stop talking about how much she loved it and I was like I've never felt that way about any school that I've been to So today has not been that great for me. I've cried many times. And I just, ugh. I just want it to stop. And I just want, I just want to make friends and not be stressed. And because school's really important to me. Like, I've maintained my, like, over 3.5 GPA for a reason. It's because I, I really enjoy school and I want to do good in it. And just like going to this school that I thought I was going to go to it's like a it's like a, a 45 minute commute every day to this school and I'd have to come back and go to work for five hours and come back and maybe only have like ideally an, an hour or two to study and then go to bed and then do it all over again and wake up at 530 to go commute to school and that leaves me no time to study and I just feel like my grades are gonna plummet and that's what'll make me spiral because grades have always been that one constant where I'm like I can do it like I can do this um just today's not been a good mental health day I will say, <laughs> on a better note, um, my previous feelings on this book, like, have changed. Like, today this book was, like, my saving grace. And, like, I didn't feel any anxiety reading it. I didn't feel triggered at all while reading it. Because I feel like this just saved me from how horrible I was feeling today. I read this while waiting for certain seminars to start and my advisors see me and all that stuff and I'm almost done with it I'm around less than 50 pages left and I love it I think it's my new favorite read of the year we'll see I, I am really enjoying this but um I don't feel that way that I did anymore I obviously don't want to feel what this main character is going through but um I don't feel triggered anymore so that's good I guess it's a plus out of today um but yeah I'm gonna go finish this book and hopefully feel better hey y'all it is many days later it's now in the middle of the romance-a-thon I wanted to wrap up this vlog sorry my last clip was kind of a downer <laughs> I was going through a lot yeah my mom and I are going to go visit an advisor for another school I might go to later next week so hopefully that works out if y'all want to see a video about me talking about my college experience or my experience with anxiety dealing with school please let me know if it can help anybody talking about my experience I'd love to share with y'all also yes we're in a different little location because I have a back injury. If you want to know the full extent of it, watch my romance thon vlog. Yeah, not feeling that great. The bad luck just keeps on coming. 
But anyways, I want to wrap up this reading vlog and tell you all that I read this week. So in total, I read four books for the Buzzwordathon, three of which were audiobooks and one was a physical read. So the first book that I read for the Buzzwordathon was Royally Yours by Emma Chase. This is the fourth and final book to the Royally series and I absolutely loved it. What a, a wonderful audiobook. The narrators were fantastic. I think you can only get the fourth book on Audible, like Audible is the sole maker of this audiobook. I really loved this and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read for the Buzzwordathon was Hate to Want You by Alicia Ray. I did listen to it through my library's audiobook service and this is from the library too, um, but I decided to listen to it instead of physically read it and I really loved this book too. I know I originally said that it was going to be a 5 star for me, but after thinking on it for a couple days it's not like a new 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 favorite of mine so I think I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really did enjoy it but it's not like a new favorite of all time for me but I did enjoy it nonetheless. The next book that I read was Suddenly You by Lisa Kleepis. Um, this is one of the funniest books that I've ever read for historical romance. I really enjoyed it at the beginning. The beginning and the middle were so much better at the and when like all the conflicts started and like got resolved, I wasn't there for. I give it a three out of five stars. It was just okay. I thought it was leaning towards like my first five star historical romance book, but um, no, the conflict and the resolution to that conflict were not good, kind of stupid. So um, three out of five stars. And I have a bunch of other Lisa Kleepas books, so I really hope that they're not all like this. <laughs> Hopefully not. But the narrator's really good, I gotta say that. And the narrator was really good. And the last book that I read was All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. And I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I already have all of the tabby marks. I really loved this. And I think it's my new favorite book of the year. It deals with a subject that I do not like to read about. I don't. I stay away from books talking about infertility or miscarriages just because it hurts my soul like it hurts like I know people go through it and it's devastating and it's probably way worse for people I understand that I just I just don't like reading about really sad stuff and this is something that makes me really sad unfortunately since I don't really read books like this and I steer clear of them this was very hard for me to get through as you could see from the other clips I had a lot of anxiety about this book because it deals with something I'm very scared of. But it was just so good. I cried a lot. I haven't sobbed about a book since Kingdom of Ash. <laughs> this book really hit me hard. And it's not just a romance book. It's like just a great work of fiction that people should read if you're not triggered by some of the things in this book. I loved it. I loved our two main characters. I loved how it shows how relationships are not perfect. I love that aspect of it because a lot of times in romance books it shows like them living their happily ever after or they meet and they maybe have some little conflict here or there but other than that they have a happy ending and everything's hunky-dory and um this breaks that barrier of reality I think and it just shows that not all relationships or if any any relationship is going to be perfect or happy all the time and you shouldn't expect it to be. I really loved that from this book and I think it's my new favorite read and it will be one of my favorite books of all time. That was the end of the Buzzwordathon reading vlog. I hope y'all enjoyed this reading vlog. Please let me know down in the comments if you have read any of these books or if you plan to because I would love to know. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye.